In order to move on from modeling with just primitive shapes, what we need to do is we need to start understanding the components of each one of our models and how we access them and how we work with them. So what I've got here is a teapot and it used to be uh, a parametric primitive. So if I was to just create a teapot quickly here, there it is. But what I've done is I've converted it to be an editable polygon. And I've done that by right by selecting the model, right clicking over it so our quad menu comes up. And down at the bottom saying convert to and then convert to editable polygon. Clicking on that and then we've made this editable polygon shape. So I'll just delete that and come back to our original here. When I select that editable polygon shape you'll notice that there are a whole new set of tools available to us. And really this is what we're going to be working with and what we're going to be looking at now. So the first thing that I need to do is to look at the selection modes that I've got available to me. And if you close up everything on the right hand side here and then just open up selection that's what we're going to get. I can also access these options by clicking on the black plus button up here next to editable polygon. And these actually mirror what's down here. So vertex is this one. Edge is there, border, polygon, and element. Now the first thing that I want to do to this teapot, because for some unbeknown reason, whenever they're created inside of 3D Studio Max, the lids never fit properly. So I would like this lid to be modelled to fit properly into my teapot, otherwise it would just fall through and it would it would disappear in the water, squash the tea bags, it would be horrible. Absolute carnage, I wouldn't have my tea done properly. So what I want to do is I want to go to Select by Element, and then left click and select the lid. Now previously when I selected this object I selected the whole object. Now what I'm doing is I'm selecting an element of that object which is in this case a collection of objects which or a collection of faces that make up the teapot lid. Conversely I could select the handle or I could select the spout or the body of the teapot itself. But what I want is the lid. What I'm then going to do is go to my scale tool and scale this very very gently in two di in two directions x and y so that it fits and you can see now when i look around my model indeed my teapot lid does fit and i can just move that up very very slightly there we go and it just gives a little bit of a sense of a bit more of an interference fit there so i'll turn off element and that's my element once i've turned that off i'm no longer in sub object mode i am now in object mode okay so here's sub object mode and there's object mode however we won't always be working with just elements we'll probably be working with much sort of smaller and more intricate points namely vertices so I'll click on the vertices there and you can see that the model has now got all of these blue dots which are the vertices that are available to me and if I click on one of them just press Q here you'll see that I can select just individual vertices on their own. If I was to use my marquee selection tool I can select a whole load of them but I have to be careful because I'll probably select a lot on the back side of the object as well. Come to that point in a moment. That's very very evident if I select a whole bunch of faces here. I also select faces there so this is a little bit more obvious. So what I can do to prevent that from happening is I can turn on this ignore back facing. So here's an individual face that I'm selecting as well as an individual vertex. I'll marquee select a bunch of vertices and you can see because we've got ignore back facing on I now don't select anything on the reverse side of the object. This is also true if I use polygons as well. There you go, you would have expected that to have got anything on the back side, on the reverse side. And there you go, you can see it's absolutely clean. We also have edges, where I can select various different edges here. And if I select just one edge and then press loop, I get all of the edges all the way around there. So I've now got as well the ability to move that edge loop up and down, or sorry, move this ring up and down. Strange, it's not the loop that you're moving, so what I can do is I can select multiple edges here. 
and then I can take that loop and I can left click and I can move that selection around the loop which is a bit odd but there you go or I can move that selection up or down or if I press and hold control I can make multiple selections within a group so it's very very useful in that regard as to what you can do um, we can't unfortunately do loops or rings of polygons what we can do though is we can grow that selection or we can shrink it that's at this stage we do have the graphite modeling tools which we'll get into a little bit later but at the moment this is really all that we can do with this one little trick though that I do quite like if I select these two edges here for example and I say loop and I actually wanted to select all the polygons in here if I press and hold the control key I get not just that ring but I get everything that those edges were touching if I come back to edges if I press and hold shift and click on polygon I get the polygons that were just inside of those two loops remember that's shift and that's pressing control and it only works when you use these options down over here so that's quite an interesting one it's quite a time saver for you because once you've got those selected you can then start working on them so say for example I hit delete now and that brings me to my other point which is the border edge tool and you'll notice with the border edge I can't select anything here unless I select these two open edges once I've got these two selected I can then start to do something maybe I could bridge between them there you go that's healed the join I could do whatever I wanted but it's good to know that a border edge is only an edge of an open polygon so for example here this is a, an open hole within my polygon surface so my border edge will only select those edges and cap that and then close the hole off so you've got a couple of sort of very simple very easy ways of selecting either vertices or collections of vertices where I can grow my selection out here and I could then maybe move that selection you see there or once we've got a set of things like our polygons we can then start to do some of the other operations that we're going to look at a little bit later on.